but it's time. Tea time. Yeah, this is tea time. Yeah. Make it a difference. One cup at a time. Tea time. So be sure to grab your tea, grab a seat, and tune in to Miss Liz. Tea time. Make it a difference. One cup at a time. back to tea time we are back for the afternoon tea time show and i am joined with brenda susie and we're going to be talking about a lot of different things we're going to talk about import export but not so much we're going to turn it into an adventure tea time because there's a lot of things that we're going to talk about that i feel is more important to talk about importing and exporting is really important consulting is really deeply important but what brenda does in her second passion and life is incredible and i think we need to have that out there this afternoon so again i want to thank everybody for tuning in this morning for tea time with miss liz and just truly making a difference on everyone's life when you turn in and you share these tea times tea time is here for these guests and we want to really just make a difference in their lives so i want to just give a little bit on disclaimers and all of that we will be taking um precaution we are in tornado warning here in Cornwall, Ontario. So if you do see a slip out, it is because we need to go for cover. But we're right now we're safe and sound. So we're going to continue the show and we're going to keep going. So we're going to do the disclaimer, a little bit of bio on Brenda, and then we're going to get Brenda in here and she's going to share us a good strong cup of TEA this afternoon with all of you out there. So the disclaimer for Miss Liz's live tea time live shows. Miss Liz, myself, is going live using StreamYard. Before leaving a comment, please grant StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com. Please be advised that the content brought forward for any Tea Time show hosted by myself, Miss Liz, is always brought forward in good faith. However, it may bring forward dialogue and opinions that are not representative of my platform. The facts and information are perceived to be accurate at the giving time of airing. All Tea Time guests and audience participants are responsible for using their good judgment in taking any action that may relate to the discussion. The content brought forward may include discussions for some where they may be emotionally at risk. It is significant to know that the, this show is engaging in discussion forums only to offer and inspire awareness and connection and is not providing therapeutical advice. If you have any questions about the disclaimer or the panelist discussion, you may freely contact me, Ms. Liz, through my email at bookingmissliz at gmail.com. Moving forward, should you choose to voluntarily participate in today's show in any aspect, I myself, Miss Liz, welcomes you. And should you decide that this show is not made for you at this time, I respect your wishes and will see you at a later show at a later date and time. And again, all tea time shows are done on Thursday in 2023. Unless they are rescheduled tea time, then they are done on a Monday or Tuesday. So now a little bit on my guess. Who is Brenda? Brenda Susie is a speaker, certified dream builder coach, and life mastery consultant. Brenda guides personal and amp professional clients to design and manifest a life that is in harmony with their soul's purpose by gaining clarity on, on their dreams and goals and how to turn them into reality. Brenda has applied her many years of education and experience in international business by speaking in front of government and military ministries of multiple nations, high level management in, in the corporate world as well as at the week of kindness 
and Gratitude Summit and the Kaushalya UK men are f- from Mars event. I'm going to get her to say that word because I'm not sure if I said it right. Uh, so for Brenda, for more on Brenda, you can check out her f- full bio on Miss Liz's Facebook page. Now let me get Brenda in here and let me take a sip of my tea. Welcome, Brenda. Hi, Miss Liz. Thank you for having me. Such a pleasure. It's an honor to have you. So, Brenda, let's get into who Brenda was as a little girl and who Brenda is now. <laughs> a little girl, Brenda. Um, I grew up with an a, a entrepreneur's uh, family. My parents, uh, they, used, they are still to this day after uh, so many years of business. They take products from, with their trucks to the United States and they bring back products to Canada with their trucks, a transportation company. So I grew up as a little girl always going everywhere on the east coast of the united states with my dad and discovering all different cultures and different uh, dialects like north carolina south carolina the the accents of boston new york there's there's every time that we we went outside to chuck there was always something different and curious to learn about and looking forward to it so i eventually grew up in it's like where we i have time where are you going oh i've been there and if, if ever they would say, well, I'm going now to Austin, Texas, I was like, wait five minutes, I'll pack my bags and I'm on the track. So I would always be open to go and discover new locations, new, new things. And, and that's my father, in a way, always asked me, where, where did you get that sense of adventure? like look you you were my mentor <laughs> you introduced all that stuff to me so that was me growing up is always um, going outside of my hometown and, and discovering lifestyles cultures food dialects slangs like different languages so it was, that was my background as a little girl so Brenda have you always lived in Canada I grew up in the area of Edmondson, New Brunswick, a small town called Clare, which is at the cross border of the state of Maine and uh, New Brunswick in the Maritimes of Canada. So do you love, and what do you love about Canada? Oh, everything. <laughs> I've crossed Canada three times. I had to go and live in Australia and New Zealand before I came back home and actually go all around New Brunswick. I, I worked in Fredericton, New Brunswick, and it gave me access to go three hours to every single corner of the province. And then one summer I did cross Canada and I went to work in Vancouver Island. So it's every provinces was a different scenery and it, it got me to discover um, as I, I did travel through it, like every portions of Canada and Canada is a beautiful country. Like I'm a big advocate to bring people in Canada. So I, I the reason why I asked you that is because I want to get into, we had talked just before we went live about uh, hosting families. And that's why I, I asked about Canada, because you, you just had two incredible international students come and stay with you, correct? Yes. Yes. Uh, my daughter was 14 and she came to me and she says, I want to go and study uh, abroad. And initially it was university level. And then she's like, maybe I should go at high school level. And I was like, OK, um, I'm not saying no, but let me learn more about this. And um, I connected with uh, MLI Homestay, which is the name of the companies that are looking for host families and there are in big needs of host families so i connected with them i said i want to host one uh, person one one child one student and um, they say well you have an extra room do you mind taking a second student so i had these beautiful kids one from was from uh, is from granada spain 11th grade and um, 16 years old when she showed up at my house. And uh, the other one was uh, Tokyo, Japan. Again, 16 years old, showing up at my house for a 10 month, 11th grade period, like section of their life. So I, it allowed me to learn a lot about the program, the safety of it and how we can, uh, uh, how will my daughter be when she goes? And she's going with Yes Canada program, which is the, MLI is coming in 
And yes, Canada is uh, taking Canadians to to learn um, getting their 11th grade or 12th grade into a different country. So my daughter is leaving in September, uh, August 23rd to do her uh, 11th grade in France because I'm my first language. I'm, I'm a francophone from New Brunswick. I, I learned English over the years. Uh, but so while I did what what I did with them, it was my own choice. And I took them um, at Christmas. I crossed Ontario, Quebec, and I took them to New Brunswick. They played in snow. They, they just the experiences of what we can do back home. And then in, in April, uh, March, April, May, June, I took them to uh, Toronto. Uh, I, they went skating in the Toronto rink right in front of the city hall for one day. And then we went for a long weekend, a, a four-day Toronto trip. I took them to Niagara Falls, another long weekend in May. And uh, I took them to Ottawa on the when the coronation of the king. They, yeah. So, and I took them as well to... Um, the last one was, um, oh, Canada Wonderland. You have to go there, right? <laughs> right? Everybody's got to go to Canada's Wonderland. <laughs> yeah. So uh, they love their experience. And uh, actually, they're both going back home. And they're going to do the their exam of being a certified bilingual. Like one will be Japanese and English and, and Spanish and English. So they have so much. I wanted to expose them to opportunities. I wanted to show them when you go into a country, go out there, show up for yourself and discover what's what's there to learn and grow. And they love the maple syrup. I went through a lot of maple syrup. <laughs> See, I told everybody, whoever's tuning in and you know who you are, Canada has the best maple syrup. Yes. I, I, we have this competition going on between a couple of people and I'm, I'm like, Canada has the best. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I agree. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so that they had a beautiful, amazing, one of them went to the prom, but because they don't have proms in, in their country, and they're like, oh. we're in North America. So uh, one of them went to the prom, and they, she had a beautiful, safe experience. And uh, yeah, they, they had a lovely experience. So I'm all the energy and all of what I've... It, made them experience and challenged them as well as being women in the world bring your voice out and like you know and um so there's certain times i i did challenge them to go back and be, have your own voice and it's okay and and so i'm hoping that my daughter when she goes to france um that she will get all that good energy that was was provided and given to these beautiful souls that came into my eyes for 10 months and, you, and do you keep the relationship after with these students? We have a, um, a WhatsApp, uh, and a, they named it our new family. Oh. So it's been since September. Um, Rio from Japan created this WhatsApp chat, and it's the four of us. And the two girls with my daughter, they were like-minded at a new level, and they 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 grew together and they just had fun positivity and i was thinking you know three teenagers emotion t es like estrogen and all that stuff but no it was it was a beautiful experience for everybody well, and so we keep in contact with one another like we every day every second day there's always somebody that comes and uh, we we talk about what, what's going on and uh, how we're doing and sharing that stuff so it's it's good it's very good it's a lifetime it's a lifetime uh family and when uh, when they left they said it's sad we're going we're leaving home to go home so that was nice when i heard that well, i did my job nice. well <laughs> right it's nice when they call your home home right yeah and, yeah and i think it's really important because what your what you do on the on the side your second job is a soul life adventures and that is truly an adventure and an experience in itself you know yeah. uh, i, I want to talk to you about your passion project that you're yes. working on for 2024 i'm like i said i'm going to talk about the import and export in a little later in the show but we're going to get the good stuff out right now <laughs> so brenda mm -hmm. you you talked to me before we went live about the passion project so if you want to share a little bit about that Yes, my uh, passion project is basically Brenda all coming together in every every phases of it. Um, like like my company is Soul Life Adventure. 
uh, I've traveled a lot in, in solo traveling with or other with other people. And I do find that we all have a soul to go for an, an adventure on this life. And that's the purpose is, is this adventure is to, for our soul to grow during this human life that we're experiencing. So um, what I want is I want to share all these, a lot of people, some, sometimes they wait on their partner to go traveling. They want to do this and that, but they wait on somebody else or they wait on, or I'm fearful, I can't travel alone or, you know, there's always an excuse or a reason or much later. So what I, I, I want to is that um, in 2024, I'm working on my passion project to bring a group of people. And in the morning, we do a mindset shift. We, we learned my workshops and um, all my programs that I have. I customize it for the groups. And then during the day, we go sightseeing and learn. And uh, in the evenings, we can have a, a recap of what we've learned. Like, for example, um, my background is Toronto. There's Ottawa, there's Niagara Falls that I'm working on right now. And even in, in the North Bay area where I am, it, one hour and we're sliding on a tube in the wintertime. Or there's different experiences that we can do. But there's three international locations that I, I, I'm looking into, which Italy is already one that I'm, I've, I've, I have the, the, the timeline and everything. Uh, Amalfi, uh, Amalfi Coast. And basically, it's a culinary experience. I am an amateur cook. I love cooking. I watch cooking shows in different parts of the world. And now it's time for me to go. And, and so basically, at 3 o'clock in the afternoon after we've sightseeing, we have an Italian chef that's going to come out and show us how to do uh, Italian uh, pasta, Italian food. And then we eat our own food. <laughs> so we have to be good students. <laughs> right? We so, got to eat it. So it's got to be good. <laughs> yeah. And the other one is France. France, I've, I've been so many times. And the other one, I'm, I'm going to do my own experience in November in Morocco. I'm going solo traveling on this trip around in Marrakech and Casablanca. And I'm, I'm actually going to be sleeping in the dunes in the Sahara for one night. Yeah, I'm with camels. So I'm going to go and experience that for myself and come back. And, and because there's the, the food is through the tangines and like how women can walk around. And uh, it's French there as well. So my first language, French. Like I can translate, I know the language and France is as well. But Italian, I don't know Italian, but I know English and I, I love food. So I think I can get myself <laughs> I think I can, with the I can get through it. <laughs> <laughs> but really, like I would, I'm starting with my background, which is Canada. As I said, Canada is beautiful. And the other one is the Maritimes. It's either we land in Nova Scotia or Fredericton in Brunswick, and we go see the, the Maritimers, which are lovely people. <laughs> well, so how would people be able to find out about this, Brenda? Is it going to be on your website? Uh, yes. Is there going to be like sign up? How many people are going to be going? Like, is it going to be a big group? Is it going to be small groups? I want to keep it as a small group to 10 to 12 people uh eight to 12 people so it's uh, nice and cozy and when we do the workshops in the morning during breakfast time then we can go we have time to go around and um and be participants and be um uh sharing and, and having that time to do that. So I want to just very nice and cozy. So um, that's what I'm working on, having a landing page and uh, actually putting it all in one section where it's easy to plan ahead uh, because I know that some are international flights and stuff, which the flights will not be included. But yes, it's going to be um, um, all set up that's my vision is, is one I want to create. I'm working well, on it, that right now. I think that's a good experience too, to, like you said, like people wait for their spouses or they wait for the right moment and, you know, and some are, are scared to travel alone. You know, uh, it gives you that opportunity to also make friends yeah. and get to Connect. know each other. You know, because you just never know where the other people are coming from. They might be coming from a different country that are signing up for this, you know, yeah. uh, it, I, it, I find that that's going to be an amazing thing and culinary, like 
that that's an experience in itself. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, the international ones will be more into the food, but I can go into wineries. I can go into various uh, aspects because France, if you go to Bordeaux, you're going to have to taste a little bit of champagne, you know, <laughs> right? uh, and then Champagne, that's where the champagne is made. But Bordeaux is the wine and like there's all kinds of different like uh, vineyards. So the, this, this is what my my vision has always been is i want to c- bring people to experience um and show that uh different ways of coming back and experiencing life your routine life does not need to be work sleep cook work sleep cook um like i went to work on vancouver island and i had never hiked before and i i went hiking there and then was like wow i love hiking and it never dawned on me that, oh, let me go take a walk in the woods. And I, it never dawned on me. But when I was in that location and in that environment, then I find a new passion of, of mine that I want to come back and implement into my life. So it's little things like that that I want to expose people of like their own little passions that they, they did not know about. And like I said at the beginning, I, I, and I keep on saying that you can read in a book. And nowadays you can watch a TV, a cooking show on, like I do uh, any, anywhere around the world, uh, but it's not the same until you're in there experiencing and living it and like really Im- embodying it into your soul life adventure. <laughs> well, it goes right into the soul, right? Like Exactly. And it's the adventure of learning and doing and touching and smelling and seeing for yourself. Like you said, you can read a book, you can watch it on TV, but it's not the same experience. It's not the no. same adventure. You know, you get to experience the heat, the cold, the, you know, the rain, the the sunshine. You you get to experience the smell, the you know, the atmosphere, the the community. Like you there's so much adventure out there. Yeah. You know? And like you said, like going in the woods and walking. Like, you know, oh, that's a new better. adventure. Yeah, and it's the the best way of connecting to Mother Nature, which is your your soul. And when you're in that environment, then you get to be clear on what it is that you want to create for your own life. And when you change your perspectives with the mindset gr- programs that I do have, you change your perspectives on life, and you come back with your. your this is a tea, a uh, teacup. So basically, you fill up your teacup. And you get more of that cup to give uh, yeah. to uh, others. And you know what? As I said, I'm a single mom. And when I became a single mom, I was like, okay, this is good. My work is good. My house is good. Now let's connect back to me after I got divorced. And I was like, my passion is traveling. So um, my daughter was two at the time. And by the time that she learned she said that I have a mummy time and that's okay because self care is yep. self love. It's not selfish. And, <laughs> and uh, I have a daughter that's 16 years old well, is 15 will be 16 in August. And she understands that, 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 that concept of filling up your own cup and she understands it's okay that a woman, a mom, and that can go out and do what she loves back. But when she comes back, she's refreshed, refreshed, she's clear, and she's got much more energy and much more love to give to um, the family. And the other thing is she knew that it was going to be a mummy and daughter trip and it was going to be a mummy trip. And, and that was okay with her. And um, she was always curious to, to learn more about. So last August, I took her to Scotland. And we rented a, a, a caravan and I drove <laughs> on the other side of, of, of the road. But at the end of the week, the, like I used to backpack all the time. And uh, so at the end of the week, she's like, you're hardcore. <laughs> I was like, well, <laughs> we just saw Scotland. I've got other countries to go see. <laughs> But now she's doing a, a similar experience with her father. She's currently in Peru, and she's going trekking in the um, Inca, the Machu Picchu Trail. Uh, uh, so uh, she is um, doing this with her father now. So she's she's 
um, she grew up with knowing that it's okay and it's going out and traveling and you're learning more about yourself but when you come back you've got a lot more to give and um and you're as you say this is the tea uh conversation she said we're, we're, we're cup we're, we're our cup is full our tea cup is full so brenda you're talking about tea we're, and we're going to get into your tea because i think it's a good time to talk about your tea so if i ask you what your tea is what words would you give me well, it would be uh, traveling, uh, discovery, and adventure. That's where my soul grows. <laughs> so do you want to tell us a little bit about why you gave those words? Uh, traveling is my passion, and, and I think that's why I initially went into an international business, thinking I would travel with my work, but did that happen? So travel is my passion. I know that. Uh, discovery is always constantly learning about things and about myself. And if I haven't learned it, then it keeps on coming back until I learn it. <laughs> so I can discover, I have more energy and I can discover more. And adventure is, like I said, my, my, my company name is Soul Life Adventure. We are all here on an adventure and it's how we choose to show up for it. And create I like it. that. Right, because if we don't show up, how can we have an adventure? You know, it's like if we just sit on the couch and or read that book, we're not actually taking that adventure. We're taking a little bit, but we're not going the full course of the adventure, right? Yeah, yeah. I can read books. I don't retain it as much as when I'm living it. And a lot of people read books and they retain everything they read, but I'm not made that way. I have to actually experience it and ask the questions and, and live it, you know. So, Brenda, you said that you got into the field that you did because you thought you would travel. And <laughs> yeah. Got, and it didn't work that way. But there was a lot of importing and exporting going out. So you did kind of travel, but you traveled in that little. <laughs> uh, my last, uh, the, the last, uh, the last company I worked for was uh, a mining company. And they're all over the world. And, and they're contractors and engineering in different parts of the world. And they would come in. I was a supervisor. And. I would work still in the shipments because there's certain shipments that the procurement people would buy in Sweden and I needed to bring it to Mexico. There was no need for, for spending that time that cost in the money for bringing it to Canada and then bring it back to Mexico. So Switzerland to Mongolia, Australia to Indonesia. So I was a lot of those were my expertise and i would give import export to my employees i would teach them how to do that but a lot of times i'm like okay i'm in mongolia right now <laughs> <laughs> see that's and what i was just thinking as you were naming all these places i was like well i just went there and i just went there you know that's what i say about tea time i just traveled here like tonight i'm going to be traveling to jamaica you yeah. know I, I, you know, it's the way we look at things. It's our yeah. perspective and mindset, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I had this like 7.30 till 4.30 or whatever the time, uh, the corporate job. I was a free forwarder. I was I did air imports, air exports, ocean export, and I worked in projects. Projects was my passion in there because there's no infrastructure. And that's probably how I ended up in, in the mining industry because one time they gave me longitude and latitudes to ship to. It's like, I can't ship to longitude latitudes like <laughs> Canada Post or somebody won't know where to go. And uh, so basically, um, I worked in the uh, Bombardier, which is the, uh, they called them now the water scoopers, but they're the CL, wa the, the water bombers, the water flying oh. planes. And I worked there for 10 years, uh, building in that manufacturing and exporting those. So when I spoke with the different uh, inter international ministries, it's because I was presenting these aircraft and the paperwork and the log books to um, Malaysia, Morocco, France, Italy, like in various uh, United States. Montana has a few of those aircrafts and um, Washington, spont uh, um, Spontane, Washington. I'm saying that we're uh, wrong right now, I know. But, um, and various provinces in, in Canada, like Newfoundland, Manitoba, Quebec, Ontario, they all have these aircrafts, the water bombers, uh, the water scoopers, 
whatever you you how they're calling it in different countries uh, the italians uh, it was interesting working with the italians it was interesting to work with the the generals of morocco because i was the only female around the the, the table so i had to dress up a certain way and i couldn't i had a three-page document on how to behave in front of of oh. Um, yeah, and uh, and bef in front of the generals in, from Morocco. But after the first fourth aircraft and third aircraft, they're like, Brenda, we are in Canada, in your country. Be yourself. <laughs> so it was so much fun just working with these different governmental people and 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 generals and and military people. And uh, so yeah, uh, so. I, I was always in international business, but I met all these people from all over the world and I work with them. So when we were building the Italian aircraft, I was like, okay, well, I'm in Italy right now. <laughs> so, and when I became in, in the mining industry, again, I was probably, I was the only woman in the operations of, of the mining around the table. And uh, I really had to show my knowledge my experience and but when i was working on the shipments i was i was imagining in my own mind this is the country i'm in right now and i was like suddenly in a little bubble of i love this because now i'm imagining i'm there but every time that they had a delivery in italy or they had to go to morocco malaysia I was always the one that needed to stay in the office to provide them with the documents and all that stuff. So that's why I was never able to travel with, as an international business, a P-Log, I was never able to travel for work because I was needed in the office while the other guys were, were going. <laughs> well, I think that's really empowering what you just shared. You know, you were the only woman. So to bring empowerment to the young girls out there, to show them that, you know, you can still do this. Even though you sat in the office, you were still the only woman at that table. Yeah. You know, uh, I think we need to really encourage our girls and our daughters out there that, you know, you can do this yeah. you, and, and have that mindset where you're in Italy, you're in Morocco, you're you know, mm -hmm. kind of create the, the, that environment, you yeah. know, but like you said, you had to dress a certain way, you had to act a certain way. Oh yeah, I, I even touched the the general, the first aircraft, uh, and I told the I told management and I said, you, you guys already know that you shouldn't put me in this this office because I'm gonna there's something I'm gonna do wrong here because I'm I'm in Canada and it's the way I, I am and so I the the general he only came once the first aircraft the general asked me something about the prop the propellers logbook. And I went and put my hand on his shoulder and and I I was showing him in the book where it was and all and I could feel him stiffen up and I just went back to the management and said, Oh no. And there's like, okay, what did you do? <laughs> so I explain what I did. And they're like, Oh, you're gonna get stoned. <laughs> <laughs> they were just joking with me, but I said, I told you guys, you shouldn't put me in this this room. But you know what? They they, they were very accepting. Um, they respected me because I was very um, knowledgeable. I know my answers, and and for working for twenty years with always with men and being this the only woman uh, around the table, you eventually you, that your education, what you know, is what becomes respected as a woman, and not not the other stuff right yeah and the the other thing that i was telling that my host uh, daughters is that if i was working full time and i did not retire from my day job i wouldn't have been able to do what i was doing with them and for them and the magic school bus kept on going round and round and round mm -hmm. and uh but i was telling them like Society tells us you need to go to school, graduate, go to university, graduate from there, get specialized on something, and then work until you retire in the corporate world and continue doing what you're continuing, and then you retire. Um, and then I, I told them, I said, I'm, I got why here, but I am 48 years old, and I've retired, and now I'm a consultant. I said, you guys can also do that for yourself as well. You don't have to fit into what society says. You can actually find your passion and grow that. And when you start doing your passion, you're no longer at work. 
or a job. You're just living life. You're enjoying your life. And I yeah. said, I, I'm, I'm proof that you can create that for yourself. And that's the message I want to do with Soul Life Adventure is that I want to go and empower these young girls up to any woman age to, to say, look, like I, I got burned out at a, at a certain point as a single mom and working and everything. But you, you, there's a point in time that you can stop yourself before the burnout. So that's where I want to, to help the, those ladies to, before the burnout, you can reconnect because you've lost your way. You lost clarity on, on what is it is your purpose? What is it you want to create in your life? And that's when we become frustrated, negative, and, and only see the bad stuff coming our way, which I was at one point. That's how I'm on my second act, I guess, my second chapter of my life. And um, when I gained clarity, is it whatever I wanted from my own heart in my own life? That's when I was able to turn my life around and retire from my day job. <laughs> Well, and, and I love that you say, you know, you know, and I, I'm glad that you're my age because I'm 49 and you're 48. So, you know, at any age, we can go out and we can make a difference. Yeah. We can create different platforms. We can create different adventures. You know, we don't have to burn ourselves out with what society tells us to do. Yeah. You know, and especially being single mom, I was a single mom as well. I was married, but I was more single than I was married, you know, in and out. And it is hard raising kids and you put everything on the back burner and you just live. You just, you know, that nine to five. Okay, I got to do this. Then I got to take care of it. Then the kid goes to bed. Then, and at the, you lose yourself. Oh, yes. And, you know, and I really love that you came back and you said, you know what? I needed to connect with me. I mm -hmm. needed to get my soul, my cup full. Yeah. Because when I was working in the aviation industry, I had that time to, uh, I worked hard. But I knew I was looking forward to going to Iceland and going to Nepal or all these trips that I created for myself. And I knew that there was another week that I would take my, me and my daughter to go and relax. So I had that time and freedom that allowed me for 10 years to connect anew and I was enjoying life. But when I, I changed my industry, they sold the division. That's why I was no longer working in the aviation industry. They sold it to an Alberta uh, company, which is great. It's Canadian. Uh, but I had to reinvent myself into yeah. the mining industry. But the skills I have in import export, I was able to bring it to different uh, industries, basically. Uh, so, but I found myself that I had no more time I had no more freedom and I had no more money to actually take myself into these travel passion trips that Brenda needed for her soul and or taking a mommy daughter bonding trip and just taking a step back from the daily routine of like, okay, need to go to school, need to do the homework, need to take a bath and all that stuff. So that's when I lost myself because I was not keeping up with my passions and reconnecting with myself and taking time for myself to actually come back and say, hey, okay, I can deliver to work. I can deliver to my daughter. I can deliver taking care of my house, cutting my lawn, shoveling the snow and everything that comes with it, cooking. So it's, it's, it's when th that is disconnected, then you're no aligned with, with the happy feeling of your life, basically. I like that you said that word aligned because that word for me means a lot. You know, if you're not aligned with your inside, how can you be aligned with your outside? It, it all starts from from our teacup. It's whatever right. you have inside of you that you're throwing outside. Like when the time that I was going down the hill of, of my burnout, I was negative, I was frustrated, and I only saw negative. And more negative I put out there, more of that energy came in in my life. And I was just kind of drowning and I, I was stuck, didn't see any way out. And that's when I burned out. But be, when that was all happening, I knew it was the shift in my life that was going not where I wanted to be, but I did not know what to do with that. I really did not know. So until I found the right people to, to align me back to where I needed to be, because it's like that... Um, it's like that um, there's, this, there's a book called Square Two, uh, U-square, basically, U-square, Price Pritchett. 
he wrote. It's a very small book. And at the beginning of the book, he talks about this fly that is hitting itself against the, the window, trying to get out, trying to get out. And he knows that that's the way out, but he's just hitting himself and the wings are just like panicking and, and he's, it's a fly. So he's going to eventually get, get down and stay down. And that's what happens with ourselves. We, we hit our heads against a wall. We try to do the same thing, same thing, same thing. But eventually we hit a wall and we don't know what else to do <laughs> until we, we look outside and we can see there's different options that we can go about to get ourselves back up <laughs> and fill our cup. Right. So that's what happened to me. And I want to help those people find those people before they get there, basically. Well, and I, I find, go ahead. And it's, it's through, for me, it's through traveling, getting connected and taking that time, not thinking about the kids, not thinking about the, the partner, not thinking about work, not, it's just taking that time focus and, and having, reconnecting with oneself and discovering what is it that you love. Maybe it's a new thing, maybe it's an old thing, but reconnecting with, with that, right? So did you find by go going through this transformation, Brenda? that you didn't really know yourself all those years back? I knew myself, but at a certain point, my limited beliefs and my paradigms no longer helped me to grow to a new level. Or so you kind of like stuck, right? I got stuck because it's, it's not only the limited belief in the paradigm, it's my mindset, the way I was seeing life, the way I was thinking and the way I was seeing myself. And then when I went through the, the, these programs and, and connecting and rediscovering, uh, that's when I realized that there's a whole new way of seeing life and living life that with, we can create for ourselves. And that's what I'm a true believer in is that when you, when you um, focus on your wins instead of what you did not do and you're hard on yourself beating yourself when you go at the end of the day and say okay what's your wins today and then when you're happy with that you're going to sleep with happiness because you've accomplished this and this um even waking up in the morning is a win sometimes like we can be positive but sometimes there's some days we just want to stay in bed <laughs> put the covers but my mentor says a person can live 90 years but can live one year, 90 times, Ooh. but a person can live 90 years and every year is 90 different ways. So when that, that I heard that it hit home to me because there was a period of my life that I've been living six years, six times. <laughs> there was no change in it. It was the same pattern, the same cycle same cycle and that's really deep like you know it, it truly is because we all have the same life you know it's what we choose to do with our lives you know and like we said before the show started we have our hard days but we can have those hard days and still continue on to a bigger better day tomorrow maybe today is hard but tomorrow is going to be better right yeah and i love that we celebrate our wins because if we don't celebrate our wins like you said, just getting out of bed is a win. If we don't celebrate those wins, we're just defeating our, our life purpose. Our, yeah. you know, we're, we're, not, we're losing that passion. And yeah. before we started, we were talking about passion, how we don't talk about passion enough, right? Let's get passionate. Let's like really, you know, like Brenda said, when she was collecting the stuff in the business where she was in different countries, you know, and that's how I look at it too. Like when I have a guest from a different country, I'm like, I'm in that country today. Yay. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. And to add to like what you just said, like, and uh, I did not know what I was doing at that time, but um, we can have fear, but as long as we don't let fear have us and we will always have fear in our life. But as long as we have the courage and walk parallel to that fear, we will do amazing things because I do believe that we are far more graded and capable than our circumstances and our conditions, situations that we live daily. 
we can have beyond that. So, and I think I, when I, I look back, when I went trekking 10 days in the Annapurnas in Nepal, that was a solo trip that I did, but I ended up meeting up with a group and a guide and the Sherpas over there. And then I was so excited. I was like, yeah, I'm going trekking. I'm going to be among the mountains. I'm going to be in Nepal. And, and then I landed in Kathmandu and I was like, oh my God, I'm not ready for this. But <laughs> anyways, when I was so passionate about it, I booked a trip. But when I started telling people about it, they were like, oh, what about the altitude sickness? You've never done that before. How are you going to do that? And I was worried, well, are your lungs ready for that? Are your legs ready for that? And they're like, how are you going to pack for that? And I was like having all everybody else's fears and everybody's own doubt suddenly came into my mind. And I said, you know what? I'm resourceful and I'm going to figure this out. And I did. I had a 20 pound backpack that I need to live off for like 17 days. And I slept in Tibetan tea houses. There's no heat. I slept on a, a plank of wood, <laughs> cold water. I hate cold water showers, but I did it. And, uh, but the thing is, is that when I got to that mountaintop of 3,810 meters and at night at the 5 a.m., we saw the sunrise and we were standing above the clouds and we saw the mountain white tops and that scenery. I'm, I'm still having shiverings because I was so proud of myself that I had gone beyond those fears. I had gone beyond, uh, I can't do this. And, and that moment in my life is one of the wins I reconnect back to myself and say, look, I did this and I can still do this too. Right. You have to connect with your, your accomplishments, not what you failed at, but the, the failure is what you need to learn from. There's no failure. It's just a learning opportunity. But, oh, I love that. Yeah. And I tell that to the girl, my girls all of years, like there's no failure. It's just learning opportunities that's coming into your life right now. And you need to learn the lesson in it. It's not negative. It's not bad. As long as you know that it's, it is an opportunity. And uh, sometimes it frustrates my daughter. <laughs> because <laughs> sometimes she was just wants to pitch a tent and live in it but i was like pitch your tent live there 10 minutes and get out <laughs> right <laughs> right there's more to do than that 10 minute tent <laughs> yeah don't let that energy that negative energy go on that just like okay now i learn and now i grow and i what's the next thing i'm gonna do from here with what just happened to me so it's all like I, I threw a lot of challenges to my girls this year, but as a young woman, I wanted to empower them and give them the tools and the mindset that when they go back, they, they, they have that. Uh, and it's the start of these three girls, and I know that I can do that with a lot of other people as well. Yeah. Absolutely. I think so. so. Brenda, like, I think you can empower a lot of people. And with these passion projects that you're creating for 2024, you're going to open so many doors for people that might have had those fears. And like Last Wishes Consulting just said, you should be proud of the moment conquering your fears. You know, because we sh we should be proud of our wins. We should be proud of how much we overcome stuff, you know, and change the mindsets. And I think you have done that for so many, like these two international students that came from Japan and Spain. You know, you, you gave them the opportunity of seeing Canada in a different way. You know, instead of just having them at home and reading a book and watching a TV show, you actually took them to different places oh, so yeah. they could experience the countries, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, and there's so much people, they say Canada and they're like Toronto, Montreal and Ottawa. Well, there's more than those three places, guys, in Canada, yeah. you know. There yeah. is so much out there for everyone to see. And I mm -hmm. love, Brenda, that you've done that, you know, and you brought awareness to the incredible uh, you know, this hosting, the the host state and all that. Oh, you know, yeah. if anybody who hasn't heard of it and if you'd like to know more about that, I would highly recommend that you check out with Brenda. You know, mm -hmm. you, you get to bring in people from different countries and just get to taste their traditions and their flavors too because i'm sure when the girls came they they taught you a little bit about their countries and their foods as well oh yeah um they had a pd day which is a day in canada that 
the, the, the teachers take a day to uh, pers- uh, professional development, but the, the kids, they still have homework to do and things like that. So um, one day um, my daughter was studying for her exam was, was history. And um, so Sarah from Spain and Rio from Japan, they said, okay, now it's, it's lunchtime. And they came in and say, hey, like what are you studying getting ready for and my daughter says history i'm i'm learning about world war ii well for an hour and a half it was the most beautiful conversation around the table with these three girls um japan uh was with germany so she told us the japanese lesson she learned about her history in japan from Spain, she had her own version, what she learned from her country in Spain. And there's this, my daughter, the Canadian and the American way that North America, we learned in school. And there's this like sharing of ideas and and this beautiful conversation that's going around uh, two 16 and a 15 year old around the table for an hour and a half. And, and I, I just went to them and said, I know I'm very proud of you girls because Eleanor Roosevelt, and I'm going to paraphrase this, but I know it's out there, and I gave it to them afterwards, but, and she said that great minds speak of uh, ideas, uh, medium minds, they speak of events, and small-minded people, they speak of people. And I said, I want to congratulate you because every time I hear you guys talking about mindset, history, math, science, chemistry, um, plants and all that stuff that they are interested in. It's never was about people or like TikTok or like, you know, there's, <laughs> there's different things that they could talk about yeah. at a 16, 15 year old level of, of like friends and like, but it was never about that. They connected at a, a higher level of, of, and you learn more about their own, the, that country, like you said. So mm. the conversations were, were amazing among these, these kids. And um, sometimes I didn't want to sit at the table because I could not contribute when they talked about math and chemistry, but I let them discuss their own. <laughs> well, <laughs> I don't know if it's just you, Brenda, but the math that we learned in school is not the math that they're teaching now. I don't care what anyone says because <laughs> they bring it to me and I'm just like, what? Uh, yeah. I don't know I how to do it. <laughs> uh, I'm sure there's tutoring somewhere we can help you with that. Uh, I can't. <laughs> right? I uh, yeah. For my own math, I had three math tutors teach me and I just could not understand it. I was just like, I don't get it. When am I going to use this? Yeah. Like, Exactly. Why are why are you teaching me this? <laughs> like I would get frustrated with math, and I love math as a little girl. But as I got older, I was so frustrated with it. I was like, it doesn't make sense to me. And when things don't make sense to me, I get frustrated very fast and yes. very easy. Yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, and I agree. Yeah, so it's been a lovely experience all, and and um, my export import, I. A lot of times uh, it's dry because it's international laws and regulations, but I love it. And that was one of my passions of, of going through international business of importing, exporting, and I enjoy teaching it. And that's today as a consultant, I go into different corporations and I customize the whole supply chain or I customize the training that they need to know. Uh, I, I really go in there and customize uh, what they need and, and give them the tools to be successful in eliminating the cost, eliminating time, and eliminating frustrations. Because they think that import, export, and international business is like, it's so big and scary, but when you've got the tools, you've got awareness, you know which questions to ask. It's, it's no longer this big mountain. You're the bigger of the mountain at this yeah. point. And, and that's another way of empowering people and corporations. It's in, empowering the people by giving them the tools and removing that frustrations that they have at work. So when it first was presented to me to be a consultant in Northern Ontario under this government grant that um, the government gives to these corporate companies, um, I was like, no, no, I'm going this way. I've left this industry, but you know what? I'm helping people. Yeah. I'm helping, empowering them, and on. And the end results is is helping the corporation to customize a system that works for them, and not going. Online programs are great, 
but it's not customized to what they need in their mm -hmm. own business to have it grown. Because when you export, you're expanding your your basket to more options. So if locally it's not selling as much, when your export will bring you that extra money that if you do it well, it's a good resources to do is exporting. Well, and I like that you say giving the tools, right? When we're given tools and we understand the process, we don't get the frustrations, we don't get the fear, we don't get the doubt because we have some understanding when we have tools to work with. Yeah. It's just like building a house. If you give me nails and hammer, I can build a house. I can put the nails in and, you know, hammer it away and, and build up. If yeah. we don't have tools, then we get frustrated and we get, we get you know, the doubt comes in, the fear comes in, all of that stuff comes back in right yeah and, and it's it, put at the back burner and it's not dealt with so it's never been it will never be completed so i want to that's that's either it's corporate or it's one person pers personal life or a professional life when it comes together it, it it's it's for the empowerment and giving the tools and and awareness of what it is they're they're capable of doing either in their own business or in personal life. Well, and it all goes back together, right? Like when I hear the word consultant, I think of somebody who's leading, somebody who's giving you the tools and the tips on how to better your life. You know, I don't see somebody that's just at a desk and saying, you know, here's a paper, read it and then go on. Because yeah. a consultant has to describe all of these things. They have to explain the, the details and the, you know, the listings and the process and the movement, mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. that's exactly what you're doing with your, with the project and the, uh, your passion projects is you're giving people the tools. Here's where I'm going to go. Here's your opportunity to do this, 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 and this. It's mm -hmm. just like a consultant. This is your, this is your list here. This is what you could do with your, with your product. You can bring it here, 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 and here. You can't mm -hmm. bring it here because they're not ready for that product yet. You know what I mean? So it all aligns together. Yeah. And, and, you know, it all brings it back to a good, pretty, pretty box of tools you know, mm -hmm. of making a difference and having that adventure. When you have your toolbox, you have an um, amazing, amazing adventure. You, you can go anywhere, right? Yeah. You know, and, and it's the discovery you do on uh, uh, as you go. <laughs> and, right? and you, it, it becomes you or it becomes your, your business, right? Right. At the end of the day, it all goes together when you put the tools all together. You know, it's yeah. fill your toolbox and use your toolbox. You know, don't just put exactly. the tools in and never use them. Yeah. Put the tools in and use them and try yeah. and have some adventure. Yes. So, Brenda, what would your final words be for everybody today? Uh, my final words is always, I truly believe, and it's on my website, I truly believe that um, we are far more capable and powerful than our circumstances, situation, and conditions that we see ourselves living through. And when we look beyond that and we have the right tools in our toolbox and we have the filling of our cup, uh, we can create anything that we want to create. And, and I truly believe that. So, and if anybody wants to reach out to you, how could they reach out to you? You can reach out to me at uh, looking up uh, Soul Life Adventure for uh, the, the travel and connecting with me by that. There's a, a, a link directly for my Calendly link on there. And um, if for corporation, it's uh, susieconsulting.com. Yeah. And if anybody would like to have some adventure or get to know Brenda, you can reach out to her. And if you can't find Brenda, you can always reach out to Miss Liz and Miss Liz will connect you with Brenda. <laughs> uh, you. I really, I really want to thank you, Brenda, for joining me today and oh. sharing your strong cup of tea. You know, <laughs> you took me on another adventure and <laughs> I was just like, okay, this is where we're going to go, you know, and, and the, the storm has passed, you know, Good. so our, <laughs> <laughs> Unless it's hiding, you, you know, the silent before the storm, but it, ha it the storm has moved on. So I want to really thank you, Brenda, for thank you for having me. Tea. I want to thank the the viewers and supporters that jumped in and left their comments in, inside the studio today. And for all the comments that you have left with private DMing, Miss Liz, thank you so much. I'm really glad that you enjoyed the show. We got a lot of wows and thank you. And thank you for the information about housing we had from one person. So I want to, th I want to thank you, Brenda, again. And I will see everybody for the last show at 7 p.m. with 
Leslie James, well, she'll be talking about Last Wishes Consulting, who joined in, in this afternoon, and she'll be talking about end of life and all of that good stuff. So it's going to be a, a hard tea time, but it's going to be a lasting tea time. Oh, yes. So I want everyone to grab your teas and just grab your comfy blankets, put your pajamas on. Let's just have a nice, warm, cozy evening tea time. So again, Brenda, thank you for joining me today. And thank, thank you, you for having everybody. me. You're very welcome. And thank you for everybody for tuning in. And if you'd like to know more about Miss Liz, check out Miss Liz's website at www.misslizesteatime.com. Everything is there. Until 7 p.m., I will see everybody then. Okay, bye. <laughs> All right.